Oh my gosh, Sean Strickland. Wow. Um, so for those of you guys that don't, <laughs> I just watched the video. <laughs> I just watched it. So for those of you guys that don't know, or maybe do know, um, just to give you a little bit of background, Sean Strickland is fighting uh, this weekend, Saturday, tomorrow actually, uh, UFC 297 against Dresus Duplices. And they bring him to Canada. <laughs> First of all, it's funny. The interview is funny. I'm not going to play it for copyright reasons. And, you know, if you want to go watch it, you know, I have kids that watch this. If you want to go watch it, go watch it. If you're an adult, go watch it. Um, the interview, there's probably a three-minute clip where he talk, where he's talking. Um, and I'll talk about what that is in a minute. But uh, I'm not going to play it. But you can go watch it yourself. Very comical. At all, of all, above all else, very comical. Classic Sean Strickland. So Sean and I are teammates. Um, I train at Extreme Couture. Sean trains at Extreme Couture, um, and you know I'm around him quite a bit. I do his wrestling practice on Wednesdays, so I get to see a lot of the insight. And what you guys need to know is Sean is, and I'm pretty sure he'd be okay with me saying this. Sean is very much the person that you see when you see him on TV. There is not a filter in the gym. There's not a filter, you know, on the street. You know, when people come up to him and talk to him and, and you know, he, he's, you know, they're in fan mode, 100%. He's going to sign the autographs. He's going to take the pictures. There was a video I just posted of him, uh, you know, taking pictures of the kids. He does that. But to us, to the guys in the room, he's the same guy. I, I do think, I think Sean's been kicked out of two gyms for, um, for his excessive trash talk. Now, he's gotten a lot better, I've noticed, since he won the title. He's he's kind of mellowed out a little bit with us guys at the room, but he's still, he's that guy. He's just turning it up a little bit for the camera. So that so you got to understand that when you're looking at what Sean does and what he's saying, because what he says, he believes. Like, Sean is not, he is not called Chael Son, and he's not called, you know, some of these guys and said, hey, what is a character I can put on? Sean has just said, all right, I'm interesting, or I'm just going to say what I feel. I got a platform, a microphone. I'm big enough. I'm going to say what I feel. I personally, I think that Sean and I would agree on most things. I think we've identified the same enemy in our life. You know, I think we've identified the same things that are wrong with the world. And that's kind of what he's talking about. So if you didn't see the interview, a reporter asked him a question about a comment that he made a couple years ago. Um, about the gay community, about the LGBTQIA plus YZ, um, next time won't you sing with me community. And Sean, uh, instead of answering the question, asked the guy further questions. Who did you vote for? Because they're in Canada. He's like, did you vote for Trudeau? And I'm sure Trudeau is going to see it and you know be very upset and try to censor Sean. Um, so he asked him that. Then he says, are you a gay man yourself? Like trying to come at him. The guy says, no, or he doesn't say anything. He just says, I'm an ally to the community. I don't really know what that means. Um, I don't, it, it just seemed like a weird, weird answer, weird response. But so Sean goes in and Sean, if you've seen it, he does not hold any punches. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't sugarcoat his feelings. Now where Sean and I differ is not necessarily the thought process but just the approach. Sean and I have identified the right enemy, but you know, me being a Christian, and I do not think uh, Sean is an, an outspoken Christian, or I don't know what his faith life is, but he doesn't necessarily come at it from that perspective of bringing people into the fold, bringing people into the faith. So he's identified the problem, and he's just vocalizing it. And you know, he sees that, you know, transgenderism, you know, he even says at the end of the video that it's not really that big of a deal who you're having sex with and all these things. Um, but he says that what I don't like is you putting it on our kids. What I don't like is you putting it on uh, our families going around parents to talk about this. And, you know, he took a couple jabs at Canada because Canada does not have uh, freedom of speech like the United States does. And good on the UFC for letting Sean say it. Again, I don't agree with how he said it. Because if I'm talking to somebody that claims to be an advocate or somebody in the LGBTQ community, um, my goal is not to shame them or to come at them in an aggressive or um, 
or a demeaning way because, you know, I had a Bible study leader one time say, if you're mean to somebody as a Christian, if you're mean to somebody that doesn't know God, they're not going to come ask you when they want to know God. And so I've always taken that approach. And I also had the same Bible study leader said it took Jesus just as much blood to pay for their sins as it did for your sins. So ever since then, I've had zero hostility to people um, that are struggling and um, that do struggle with homosexuality. Uh, very recently, you know, obviously there's a lot more people that struggle with um, gender dysphoria and some of the social contagion that goes on. But make no mistake, Sean has it right. This is a social contagion. It is wrong to go around parents. It is wrong to push this on children because they are so impressionable. And this is, <clears throat> at the end of the day, this is a wicked spiritual issue that is going on in our society and in our culture. So, so Sean and I have the same enemy. Um, I would say Sean and most Christians have the same enemy on a lot of fronts. Uh, you know, again, good on the UFC for letting him say it. If this was the NFL, if this was the MLB, if this was the NBA, unless it was something that's pro leftist ideology, he would not be able to say it. And the UFC you know, Bud White, or not Bud White, <laughs> Bud Light is a sponsor, and he kind of shook off the question with the Bud Light thing, but he has said negative things about a sponsor of the UFC, and Dana White has let him, and I think that's the right approach. I think that's the, uh, the good approach. I think that's the pro-America approach, because somebody else on the other side of things could say the exact same thing um, that Sean is saying, just insert a couple different words on the other side, and Dana's going to let them say it too. And so that's the important thing is maybe I maybe you don't agree with what he said, but I think it's very treacherous waters to start digging into or to start swimming in when we start saying that people aren't allowed to say it. And again, I've butted heads with Sean. We're teammates. We're around each other, you know, quite a bit. Um, I don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree with everything he said to me. But at the end of the day, it's a free country. We're in America, and more people, more countries should strive to have American values on freedom of speech, not less countries. And so hopefully Sean doesn't get censored in any way for this. Um, you know, obviously we would have a different approach if it was me in that position, and hopefully one day it will be. But um, no, I, I think uh, it was funny above all else, and uh, you know, good for Sean for speaking what he believes on that issue because um, I think a lot of people are in that same boat, you know, because he did say that people aren't buying it. You're pushing the stuff and people aren't buying it. And I think that is true. I think it is uh, very much a media frenzy trying to create a bigger voice, kind of like when they say two wolves get together, they can sound like 30. I think that's kind of what's going on. So I think people are waking up to the fact that this stuff has not been good, that, you know, changing some of these laws has not been a net positive for society. And uh, that we're going to have to start looking at some of the things that, um, that we've allowed, some of the, um, the laws that we've changed, and some of the, um, you know, the cultural narratives we have around these things. So, appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment below what you think.